Hi, welcome to the channel. Today's video, we're going to do a long-term review of my Mountain Warehouse Highline 2 walk-in shoes. Now, I picked up these shoes from Mountain Warehouse. As you can see, they were on sale, as everything usually is on sale in Mountain Warehouse, down from $39.99 to $22.99. Now, these are not waterproof walk-in shoes. They're just kind of summer walk-in shoes. So the features are breathable, heel and toe bumper, and they're cushioned and molded. The reason I went for these shoes is I've got a lot of waterproof walking shoes and boots, but I've got nothing for sort of summer months where you just don't need that waterproof layer. I want something a bit more breathable, a bit more lightweight, and something that if I did end up slipping into a stream or something, that's gonna dry out over the course of the day. The waterproof linings, they just hold in the water and they can take days and days and days to dry. And I didn't want to spend too much money, so I thought for $22.99 it would be worth a go at these mountain warehouse trainers but what i did want to do is give them a proper test to see how well they actually last mountain warehouse gear can get quite a bad rep online quite a few people are quite snobbish about it but i own a few things from mountain warehouse and so far i've been really impressed with the quality and the feel of them and how well they're lasting so given that i'm doing an awful lot of walking this year <laughs> i'm called the walking kev after all i figured i'd have enough time and the weather here in wales is absolutely glorious at the moment um, to really get out and put a lot of mileage onto these uh, trainers and see how well they last. Um, the quality of them on the top feels absolutely fine, but the key to kind of trainers like this is normally going to be the tread. It's how long is this tread going to wear? How many miles am I going to get out of it? So, yeah, let's get out and start walking in them. Well, I've worn these shoes for about 160 miles of tracked walks. Plus I've worn them quite a bit just out and about without tracking the walk. So maybe 180 to 200 miles are done in the, in the shoes. So I've given them a really good test and I'm actually giving them a really, really <laughs> thorough test today. I've currently walked just over 30 miles today in them. Got another couple of miles to go. And uh, so yes, I've worn them a lot short walks medium walks and walks of 30 miles plus so my thoughts on them so far they take a long time to break in i think the first 40 50 miles they were really stiff not particularly comfortable and um, once they broke in they were much more comfortable and uh, have fitted fine ever since only slight quirk with wearing them is the tongue on the left uh, shoe just always slips to the left um, no matter how I try and tie the laces tongue always slips down not a massive thing could just be the shape of my foot because the right one doesn't do it just a little bit annoying the cushion from the sole is not the best um, I'm currently walking on a sort of grassy um, track with some sort of big rocks underneath it you definitely feel the stones and the rocks and they do penetrate and they do give you a level of discomfort over those kinds of ground so not the most cushioned uh, sole in the world grip has been absolutely fine worn them in, in, a, in a load of different places obviously they are not waterproof uh, shoes so you wouldn't be wearing them in that wet conditions anyway but I've worn them in wet grass um, boggy bits of track and stuff they've been absolutely fine they've been fine on dry rock i've not tested them on wet rock i imagine like all the other shoes i own they'd be pretty terrible on wet rock so yeah i think for 22.99 in terms of the fit and feel and comfort they're perfectly adequate you know you're never going to have the softest uh, most cushioned soles in those kind of budget ranges so the biggest issue i've got with them is that as I suspected, the tread has just not lasted well at all. Probably 50, 60 miles ago, some of the tread was worn through to actually a hole because <laughs> the tread is not all the way through. So you wear the bit of tread off and you're left with a hole. The wear seems to have slowed down now. The last sort of 60 miles doesn't seem to have worn it down um, too much more, but pretty much now, 180 odd miles they're at the end of their kind of usable life for off-road walking 
because the tread is just not good enough. So I continue to wear them um, on local walks, tarmac walks, cycle paths, that kind of stuff, until they're completely worn out. But the tread has not lasted well enough in my opinion. I mean, they are 17 99 now, so they're not expensive, but it just feels like a real waste because the top of the shoes are still in really good condition. They seem really well made. Um, so they've over-engineered the top, given how quickly the, the tread wears out. We'll have a proper look at the, uh, the tread and any other wear and tear on the inside of the shoes, particularly the heel and stuff, when I'm back at the house, because I can get my different camera out that focuses a lot closer than a GoPro and have a proper look around them. In terms of whether I can recommend them, it's, it's really difficult because I, I paid $22.99 for them. They're $17.99 online now. So very little money. And if you weren't walking as much as I do, then 200 miles might be <laughs> a very long time for you. So they might last you a really long time. The only issue I've got recommending them in that case is that I found the break-in period to be quite significant. So if you weren't doing very many miles, it would take ages just to break them in because they were just so stiff at the start. So yeah, they're difficult to recommend really, um, unless you are absolutely looking for, you know, as cheap as you can possibly get a shoe. It's just a shame that the tops are well made, but the treads just don't last long enough. It's either the rubber wasn't hard enough or a combination of rubber not being hard enough and the treads being really short to start with. So it didn't take much wear to have them down to the, the bare sole. Back from that long walk and resting up, you can see the tread is badly worn on both corners and there's a big hole there and it's quite hollow underneath. So that's absolutely chock full of gravel and bits of uh, debris and stuff. And you can see also on both shoes, it's worn down on these sides here, down to the, the whiter tread as well. So that's not gonna be long before you start getting holes in there. And you can see there's very little tread grip left on these now. So yeah, they've not worn out um, very evenly. I don't know if that's just the design or the way I walk, the way I step, um, but normally shoes tend to wear quite evenly with me, but on these you can see it's both the, the corners have worn and both the front sides. In terms of the tops of the shoes, they're still in really good condition. All the stitching is absolutely perfect. The heel and toe and um, protectors are absolutely perfect. Um, there's a little bit of creasing on these little bits here, which, which tends to happen with this design of shoe. Um, those two points are going to be the failure points just from where your toes are constantly flexing and bending when you're walking. Um, but they're, gonna, they're, they're definitely going to last a lot longer than the tread. Uh, in terms of inside the shoe, that's actually not too bad. There's a little bit of wear around the inside there, um, but it's not, the material is still holding firm on the right shoe. On the left shoe, there is a bit of a hole where the initial padding is just worn off completely. Again, something that happens really commonly with shoes just all depends on, on how long it takes for that to happen. And you can see here, <laughs> I can actually push my finger into the bottom of the shoe here because it is um, split from being so worn. So another few walks and uh, that's gonna be a nice big hole right in the middle of the, of the shoe there. So yeah, you're gonna end up a load more debris stuck in that. Now I will continue wearing these, as I said, on casual walks and stuff until they are completely and utterly unusable. So I wonder how many miles that would be, but I'll keep you updated. Maybe I'll pop a community post on in a year or two's time when they are absolutely knackered and let you know how many miles I actually got out of them. But what you could do for me is recommend anything at the budget end in terms of summer walking shoes that don't need to be waterproof. In fact, I prefer them to be as breathable as possible. But what competing brands, particularly makes models, would you recommend for sort of less than 30 quid that last better than these? Because if you recommend something, I'll go out and buy it and I'll put a couple hundred miles in like I have with these and then do a direct comparison as to how well they've lasted. So drop a comment, let me know if you've got any recommendations at the budget end of, uh, of shoes and I'll go and pick some up.
if you have been in the market for shoes and you've perhaps found these on Mountain Wear's website or in store and you've Googled to find uh, this review on them, I hope this has been helpful. If I've missed anything, anything you want me to cover, just drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Obviously, I've still got the shoes, still wearing them and stuff, so I can help you out with that. Anyway, if you made it this far, huge thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.